Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 92, Rounding Invoices. Alright, so someone sent this question in and they have a nice little spreadsheet here with the price each, the quantity, and they formatted it, put a subtotal in 1454, but they said, hey, if I just come over here and I type what I see, 5.03, 1.2, 2.37, 5.95, and till it up, I get a different answer. What is up with that? All right, well, hey, this is uh, formatting as a facade, as Mike always says in his Slaying Excel Dragons book. That Those numbers aren't what we see. They're actually stored uh, as these numbers, all right? And they went through and changed the formatting to make it only have two decimal places, but those third, fourth, fifth, sixth decimal places, they're still there, all right? So as we add up, uh, you know, these two numbers were rounded up uh, when we formatted them, um, but it's just the formatting. That's just what it's printing, right? It's still storing those other numbers, hence the smaller number here. So my solution to this, my solution to this, well, uh, you know, I'm tempted to go into Excel options and turn on precision as displayed, uh, but I'm not sure how that's going to work with formulas. So I'm just going to come back here to the formula. I'm going to say, hey, look, I don't expect anyone to actually send us 5.025 cents. How are they going to send me half a cent? Uh, I really expect them to send me 5.03. So let's just change this here. We're going to say the round of that, comma two, uh, round to two decimal places. And I think I hit Control Enter there. Yes, I did to put that all the way down. So now we have 14.55 and 14.55, and it works that way. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, uh, the old standard invoice is not uh, showing the correct total based on rounding error, and I love this. This is the way to go. Now, this is actually how I teach it in my uh, business math and finance classes. You always go to the actual calculation that needed rounding and uh, round it there. Now, why do you have to use the round function? Well, anytime you're multiplying or dividing decimals, you're required to round, meaning we have money, and you're using your formula result in a subsequent formula those three conditions, then you have to use the round function. Now, I, I like this individual uh, uh, rounding calculation here, but there is another way we could do this. I'm going to come over to this other sheet. And here's the total, right? These are not rounded. Well, what's the problem? This isn't showing 1455. So I'm simply going to take, uh, put this in edit mode and round the this range. So round. Now, round function, that number argument's expecting a single number, and I'm giving it four comma 2 to the penny. So because I've given it four numbers instead of two, this makes an, an array formula. So you have to enter it with a special keystroke. Control Shift, you hold those down and tap Enter. Now notice up here, curly brackets are entered automatically. That's Excel telling you that it understood that this was an array formula. Now if you don't use Control Shift Enter, you get a value error. That value error says you forgot Control Shift Enter. Now, uh, in this particular situation, you know, if you go research this uh, on at Google or something or Microsoft Help, they usually say use the sum, the round, and Control Shift Enter. But forget that. I'm going to use some product. Now, some product is actually programmed to take arrays, multiply them, and then add product, multiply, sum, add. But I'm only going to give it a single array, so it's not going to do any multiplying. It'll just do the sum part, add. And the cool thing about some product like lookup function and index. Those three functions, including some product, do not require control shift enter. It can they can handle arrays. It says array right there. So I just hit enter. And there we have it. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel.